And what I wanted to share with you for just a minute, because Penny has something uh, that, that you, you have to see, and, and, and it's absolutely magnificent. One of the things that we have been together working on over the past few months are the discoveries that are being made by the scientists and the astronomers today. Um, we've tracked each one of these, as you know, from the first discovery of Pegasus, which w fulfilled the Book of <coughs> Revelation, right up until they discovered through the pineal Leo, and then discovered uh, Planet Nine, and the number nine being consciousness, and the ninth planet was found in the constellation of Corona Borealis, which is the northern crown. This is such an amazing thing. These are planets which are circling suns, which are twins of the sun in our solar system, and they found nine of them. And everything came right along with, with scriptural evidence, and it showed us an intelligence behind it, even to the point where after they found the eighth, everything stopped. And, and then in the book of Revelation it says where there was silence in heaven at the point of a half hour, and then they found the ninth in Corona. Well, after they found Corona, that would line up with the Kundalini of the energy rising from the base of the spine to the brain, then became apparent that what would come after this would be the explosion of the pineal gland, if indeed this was an intelligence communicating with us, and if indeed this was following the same motion of the body, then we would expect that the next thing that occurred would be the explosion of the pineal, because that's what would happen, you know, as a person uh, reaches this uh, kundalini or the book of life, as the Bible puts it, the energy rises up, impacts at the consciousness, the highest mind, and then there's this explosion of light pineal gland. Well, you know, I couldn't have written a script that could have done what happened, but they revealed a picture taken by Hubble of the supernova. Now, when you look and you think, well, if something is going to be shown to us in the sky of the pineal gland explosion, you would figure there's you know, your eyes and the third eye in the center, which is the pineal gland. Well, the picture from Hubble was revealed and then put in color and so forth, and Penny was able, at, she took the picture from National Geographic. Penny, you want to come up here for just a moment? And um, she wants, we're going to make these available to, for the, and how much were they, a dollar? Because that's what it cost her to have these printed. But I don't know what else I can do or anybody could do to show you the message that's coming from the universe today. If you're looking for the picture of the third eye, the single eye of God, and then the Hubble telescope focuses on this object which... Dr. Chris Burroughs of the European Space Agency said, we've never seen anything like this before. And following the crown, and here it is. And I mean, what else, you know, what else could it be? And there are the two, and there's the third eye in the center, and it's right after the, and, you know, how could anybody not stop and say, we are about to be touched here in a big, big way. And I'll read you something from Astronomy Magazine which talks about what is going to happen as this center expands and collides with the gases and so forth and so on. And it is the explosion of light. And it, and it follows to us, the message follows to us, right in line with the eight discoveries of the planet. So uh, Penny has these, and you, I just think it, you, you should really have it because... You know, you've gone to church all of your life, but if God has finally chosen to send a picture of himself and put it on the front page of National Geographic, it's nice <laughs> if a few people look anyhow, you know. Let's only okay. clarify, Penny had them made up for the church, and they're on sale in the store. Oh, they are? You have them to use they're $10. I don't know. No, I wouldn't <laughs> do <laughs> such a <laughs> thing. <laughs> Yeah, George, yes. And for George, George got a few, some, a few Brooklyn bucks. Maybe, you know, you know, you know, give a contribution. I just unloaded. Uh, okay. Well, anyhow, there they are. There they are, and it's just beautiful. So you want to take that? Um, the second thing that occurred that was very interesting as part of the Coptic key, was remember the Coptics of Egypt 
who practice what is called the monophysite doctrine. And the Coptics practice the monophysite doctrine. And what the monophysite doctrine is, is physics. They were physicists thousands of years ago. And they said people were not saved by faith. People were saved by knowledge. And the Coptics told us about this number, 45, 55. And they said, hold that close to you. Well, in our investigation that helped with Debbie, we located 4555 to be a galaxy, an unnamed galaxy, with a very bright center, sharply defined features, located in the uh, constellation Coma, which is mother and child, and in the zodiacal sign Virgo. And that's a picture of, of 4555. Well, Al was working on the computer in Groliers and found something very interesting. Why don't you come on up here and uh, share this with everybody? Because this, what's interesting about this is everything we look for, to me, has to harmonize. There has to be a harmony. There has to be a harmony with the body, with the earth, and with the universe, or none of this works. In other words, Dr. Gary Toller of Goddard Space Lab says 10% of the universe is visible, 90% is hidden. Your brain, 10% left side active, 90% right side hidden. Uh, and then, of course, we have 12 constellations in the ecliptic, 12 signs in the zodiac. You have 12 cranial nerves in your brain. So everything has to be in a harmony. And what made this so important is that if there's a harmony between this, which is a galaxy that we're aware of, and us, then that would be significant. And, um, and so that's what Al found in here. Uh, I want you to... Okay. I, I started this looking for under plasma because I found out that the universe is full of plasma. And I said, plasma, blood, we're full of plasma. I just got to be a correlation, something there. So I was looking up different things on uh, Groyers and I found out something on blood. And uh, just briefly, it says, it is complex in its composition and its function. Blood has two main constituents. The cells or corpuscles comprise about 45% and the liquid portion or plasma in which the cells are suspended comprise 55%. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. 45, 55 inside you in the blood, plasma, and there's plasma in the universe. Very good. Hang on to that one because yeah. that's a good one. So then, so there you, you develop and you find a harmony. Once again, you find a harmony. Uh, so these are the things we're looking, looking at. And, you know, where people find this very difficult, a lot of people find this very difficult to comprehend. And, and of course, people that are based in fundamentalist religion uh, find it difficult, which is very strange to me because whenever you prove something scientifically, it shouldn't be difficult. It should be extremely easy and you should be able to run with it. But I find difficult to comprehend uh, fish swallowing people, snakes talking, donkeys talking, people, you know, all this kind of business. They have no trouble with that. But see, that makes you really frightened because that's normal, you know? Uh, I, I, I mean, there's a story in the Bible of a guy riding on a jackass. He hits the jackass, and the donkey turns around and says, what'd you do that for? That, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Or, you know, these Adam and Eve, two English people in the garden, they don't have any pants on. They're running around, and, uh, and a snake tells them, hey, you don't have any shorts on. And, oh, Jesus, and I'll get some fig leaves. And then a guy named God comes down out of the sky and says, who told you you didn't have any shorts on? And I said, well, the snake, what do you think? I mean, you know, this is okay. See, this is, we're raised on this kind of stuff. And uh, when, when you get to the point of being able to explain these things scientifically, it becomes not that it's oppressive to people in fundamentalism. It becomes frightening to them because all of a sudden they start, even if they won't admit it to you, they have to go home and say, gosh, you know, this guy made sense. And that's scary because I have faith in God. But see, the problem with it is they really don't have faith in God. They have faith in the person who told them about God. And that person who told them about God, he has faith because he heard it from somebody else who told him or they read it in a book or whatever. But nowadays, with the wonders that are being discovered by science all over, you don't have to have faith anymore. You can become part of it and you can experience it. I want to introduce a couple of friends who come all the way down from New York City and have been with us before and they have television programs up in New York. And uh, come on up for a moment, okay? Rita and Sutton. And once you make them welcome, come all the way from New York. And tell us, it's good to see you again. And uh, Sutton, tell us about your program and what's going on up in the city. Well, Rita has a new show called The Wise Woman Way, and 
The and wise woman way. Wise woman way. And on that show, she does affirmations and a meditation, which was the first time that she's done a televised meditation. Mm -hmm. which, which is, is very, very exciting. exciting. And, and we're getting really good uh, responses to it. And uh, people are writing in for affirmations. And I'm getting a lot of email. And Great. I have a daily email on the web. And Great. I, I know. I, I get it. Yeah. And I send you. Yeah. I, I send two people's email address, uh -huh. a daily affirmation. But I also have one that you can visit if you want to. What channel is your program on? Uh, we're on channel um, 17 on Friday night in Manhattan mm -hmm. at 8 o'clock. And then the The original show is Wake Up In Your Dream, and that's where we talk about creating your own reality with your thoughts, beliefs, and ideas. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit of like the mechanics of it. And then Rita does the implementation with the meditation and the affirmations on Friday night. Okay. And then so they kind of. Is that together. in Brooklyn at the same time? Well, now we're in Brooklyn on Sundays at 1230. Yeah. on channel 34 and channel 67 which is exciting you know I don't like to because you have a very sophisticated program and a very very good deep program but I really think there's a guy who is very sophisticated very deep here I want to go over and say hello to George okay All great right. George come on up here I want you to be on TV tell us come on come on over here George how are you I'm great I had my 81st birthday in May okay and and wait a minute, wait a minute. And what I do is I reverse the numbers. <laughs> so I'm really 18. <laughs> and you didn't say that to get a round of applause or anything. Where do you live? Yeah, I love it. Where do you live in Brooklyn? I'm a, I'm a little bit of a shtick man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. No, I've been. <laughs> Where do you live in New York? I live in Brooklyn, New York, which is the Marine Park area, okay. nice, still beautiful neighborhood. And uh, I've been a Brooklynite all my life. And I just wrote a small book about where I was born. Is that right? It's uh, memoirs. Uh, it's called Brownsville, Brooklyn. Isn't that which, nice? Which um, I, I, I believe, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good little chapter in my life growing up in the streets. And um, you and Mike yeah, Tyson. I mean, I'm not going to bite your ear. <laughs> no, that's what I was wondering. I have to. Get I'd away. rather kiss you. you know, because I, I don't you blame de you. You deserve a kiss. I don't blame you. But I don't go that way. I love the girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But anyway, I just wanted to say to you that my daughter is so engrossed and fond of you and knowing right. your work mm -hmm. and knowing that it's reaching out to humanity in God's light and I appreciate that what you do and I despite the fact that I brought up in in a orthodox and mm -hmm. then a a conservative type of Judaism, I still am open-minded enough to accept something that is glorious for humanity. Great. And That's I beautiful. commend you for that. Thank you, George. Thank you very much. All right. George, I'm going to save that. They're going to play that again. So when somebody starts yelling at me, I say, wait a minute, I get George's paper. Yes. All right, I will, we'll do that. Uh, but I just wanted to, if I could read you for a moment about this Nova that you've seen the pictures of that Penny has. Um, Supernova 1987 begins to brighten. And real quickly, um, as the nearest and brightest supernova seen since the invention of the telescope offers astronomers an unprecedented opportunity to observe the evolution of an exploding star. Recent observations confirm the beginnings of a predicted rebirth, it's born again, which should produce a thousand-fold increase in the Nova's brightness. And, um, and then it goes on to talk about it. It says the real show may be another 10 years in the future uh, when the expanding debris will smash into much denser gases um, and so forth. But don't worry about you know, time. Don't get yourself caught into time slots of when things are going to happen. Remember that science also, and God bless for all the work that they're doing. And, and, but remember that science told us that you know, they didn't really know about Mars, and now they've got a car riding around on Mars that's saying that the Earth on Mars is very much like the Earth on Earth. So um, we have a lot to learn. Uh, <coughs> one other thing I wanted to just share with you for a moment is that we received from Reuters uh, Healthline and um, a 
release, news release, it says French researchers have discovered, this is interesting, that the right half of the human brain is more dominant from birth to three years of age. Three years of age, the right side. The new discovery is based on brain scan evidence showing that the right hemisphere develops its functions earlier than the left. With the development of language abilities, brain hemisphere dominance appears to shift left in the fourth year of life. And, um, you know, it goes on talking about that. But <clears throat> it's very interesting when you think of the, the right side and, and references in, in the Bible to the right hemisphere and cast your net to the right side and all these different things. And, and finding that it's the little children. That's what we were talking about. Remember how the, the guru said when your little child spins, uh, you know, I can't do it because I would, I would fall down, but, you know, kids spin around, and we always stop them and say, oh, don't do that, you're going to get dizzy. And, 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 and the guru said, leave them alone. They're just, they're part of God, and that is God's nature, this, this complete turning. But they're so close to God. And now here's evidence that, indeed, the right hemisphere of the brain is the dominant one in a child up to the age of three. And it's only when we start normalizing them to our bizarre behavior that they leave that and then we all become like us you know uh, I always think of whenever I think of how we have uh, matured and evolved as a race and as a society I always think of that great song by Jimmy Buffett we are the people our parents warned us about you know <laughs> and uh, basically that's it so what we what we've seen so far over the past several weeks is a harmony. We were seeking a harmony. And, and, and I think we've accomplished that. We've, we've found that. Uh, you as a person, the earth that you live on, and the universe that controls, we found all of this has to work in a harmony. All of it has to be perfectly synced together. It can't, it can't go any other way. And one of the reasons we found that we have sickness, and one of the reasons we found that we have sadness is because we're moving this way, and the earth and the universe are moving that way, so there is no harmony there, okay? We found a harmony between the seven chakras uh, of the Hindus of the East and the seven seals of the book of Revelation. They're both the same, and we read that to you and shared that to you. We found a harmony in that, in addition to the seven seals and the seven chakras, that from se uh, through September until March, there's seven months when, when through the trajectory of the earth, the sun moves up to the ram, and we pass over from the winter to the spring. We experience a Passover. And then we look at what religion has done, and, and they've negated Passover. They don't understand how important it is that we pass over from the winter of the soul to the spring of the soul in the same way that the earth passes over from the winter of the season to the spring of the season. And when you negate Passover, you've negated the whole complex structure of life, not only inside of ourselves, but on the earth. And now we find out that here, when the scientists were discovering planets, they went and they, they went right through from, from Pegasus up to the seventh, and they arrived at the same place that the, the solar energy arrives within you, and it arrives up at the seventh, it arrives at the pineal, it arrives at Leo. And here, when they discovered the seventh planet, uh, Dr. George Gatewood uh, in Baltimore, Maryland, discovered the seventh planet, everything in order. It arrived at exactly the same place, at Lalandi 21185 Leo. So we found this harmony. We found a harmony in the Sphinx, the Sphinx that stands and guards the mighty pyramids, the face of the woman, the body of the lion. And we found as the sun through the trajectory comes out of the woman in September, Virgo, it concludes its journey in August in uh, the um, uh, constellation Leo, the Sphinx. We found that the energy that is the sun within us, Leo, rises up to the seventh which is Leo and the, the pineogram from virgin consciousness. We enter into Om and rise in virgin consciousness. Leo and the virgin. And, and then we saw, again, once again, with the um, discoveries in, in the universe, that same thing, rising from Virgo to Leo and, and the Sphinx recreated. Then we even found in the Bible story, in, in the Bible story of Jesus, born of a virgin, winds up as the Lion of Judah. So all of these things flowed into harmony. And then we showed you, and as Penny had those pictures made for, you know what we didn't show? And I, I feel bad about that. Could we show uh, one of those pictures to the people on TV? Um, and we all, I always forget that. You have that there? That's fine. She has that there. 
um, maybe you can get in and show that, uh, and that's that nova, uh, and you can see the, the eye in the sky, and uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous, you know. So this single eye now, after the movement through the, through the chakras of the seals, has made its appearance to us. We've seen it. You know, I, can, I, I don't know what, what else, what can I tell you? What else could I possibly do? What could shake you to a point of saying, this is real, you know? What could shake you to the point of saying, you know, you should really know more, you should learn more, you should pay attention to this, because this is happening. How, it, it's like it says in the Bible, the, the invisible things of him from the beginning of the universe are made clear by the things that are made, so they have no excuse. In other words, what God has said is, hey, folks, you're, you've reached the point now in the evolution of your consciousness that you can understand these things. And I've, you have the knowledge, the people that make Hubble, they can see all of these things, and they're showing these things to you. So what are you waiting for? Why aren't you paying attention? Say, you can't run from this anymore. You're on the earth. There's no, where are you going to go? There's no place to run. So you can be, you can be part of this harmony. Or, or you can just say, well, you know, I'm going to watch TV or I'm going to go to work. But there's a time when you're at work and then there's going to be a bulletin on the radio or on the television. That, you know, this tremendous light, something has happened, something has changed. And, and only if you know will you be able to say, you know, that's what he said. And that's what I'm trying to tell you about. And then we looked at the harmony of ourselves and what we possess. As, as individuals, as human beings, created circuitry. The human brain, much more than a computer, but nonetheless very much like a computer in a circuit. And I want to just briefly, and want to be very briefly, I wanted you to look again. Maybe you could give, do you have a package that you could give Rita and Sutton and, and George? Uh, but one of the interesting things that you, know, you and I look at is as people, we, we look at ourselves and we say, gee, you know, I know that 10% the left side uh, is my intellectual side, the part that, that I work with, and the 90% is the right side. Well, that's okay for you to, and I to talk about it, but I don't, I don't do things like that here. You know I've never, you know that in all the years you've come here, I have never said one word to you, never, that has not been documented scientifically. I, have not, I wouldn't abuse your intelligence by saying to you, well, you should have faith or believe this. And if I say to you that you're living inside of the brain of God, that the brain of God, which is the universe, is made just like yours. I better have some kind of documentation to back that up. Well, look at page 63 of this material. I don't know if the gentleman all the way in the back, is he here? You don't have any more. Yeah, if, if you would, and then he can give that back and we'll get that to you. But if you look on page 63 of this material, you'll see Dr. Toller of Goddard Space Lab in Greenbelt, Maryland. Toller, there's a part I have circled there on page 63, okay? You see page 63 there? Okay. And it says, well, I have it circled. Toller has used his data as another way to calculate total amounts of visible matter in the universe. These calculations confirm other estimates that 90% of matter in the universe is missing or unseen dark matter. That's not a testimony from some... Cook is not a testimony from some, you know, new age guy in a, in a store selling rocks. This is a, this is a, this is a prestigious physicist scientist at the Goddard Space Lab. He says 90% of the universe is unseen. So that means it's, it's like a brain. It's an electrical circuit. But we've shown comparisons between the brain and the computer. What did Buddha say? Buddha said you need three things. You need to have a document. And then you need to be able to understand it. And so when you read this document and it says, God took a rib out of Adam and made Eve, you should say, I don't understand that. That doesn't make any sense. I don't think they can take a rib out of a man and make a woman. Unless you, you know, you, you know chip it away and say, look, this is a lady. I mean, that doesn't, that's not... I mean, w and what kind of talk is that to say that your wife is made of spare ribs? I mean, <laughs> I don't want to think of that. So then we say, well, that's, that can't be. You're not a spare rib. <laughs> but on the other hand, on the other hand, when we look and we say, if we take Adam, A-T-O-M, 
and we remove from Adam an electron, we cause an ion that now starts a chain reaction of self-replication. In other words, what the Bible is saying is not that God took a rib out of Adam and made Eve. What the Bible is saying is all of this started by the splitting of the atom. Oh, why, we can't say that in church. That makes sense. So we wipe that away. Don't let them hear that. Oh. Yep. But see, that's what happened. So then we not only know that we've got the document, we understand the document, now we put it into effect. And let's see if it really works. When you remove an electron from an atom, does it cause replication in that? Absolutely. Chain reaction. So then it's proven. We've proved it. And this, the Bible is filled with things like that. See? And so when you look at that, then if you say, well, let's take a look at the human brain and see if the human brain qualifies as a computer. We've just got the document. We understand the document. We put it into practice. Take a look on page 68 of the material that we gave you, the very last page. <laughs> the very, very last page. There's no other pages in front of it. And if you look and you see on page 68, what is a computer? Any machine that does three things. That's just like Buddha said, isn't it? And the three things are accept structured input. The word of God. <laughs> Processes it according to prescribed rules. The prescribed rules are do not be a minister of the letter, for the letter kills. Do not take this literally. Okay, I got that. And then produces a result. So I know you can't take a rib out of a man and make a woman, but I also know that when you take an electron out of an atom, you can create energy and it will multiply itself. And so there's a computer which does exactly the things that you and I do. And that's what the definition of a computer is. Now consider something else. Hold open to that page that you have, page 68, and consider logic. And what I consider interesting is when I look at that, uh, look at the bottom of page 68, line 3 says logic circuits are called gates. These are the gates that we were, we've been talking about. Those are logic, and they're in your brain. The logic circuits, the gates are in your brain. And do you think that it's just some kind of perverted coincidence that the most powerful man in the history of the world and dealing with computers just happens to be named Bill? Gates, <laughs> you know, because I'll tell you something, if his name was Sidney Feldman, those logic circuits would be called Feldmans. <laughs> How many Feldmans are there? Because that's the way it is, and that's the way this thing has all been set up for you. Now, look at here, and real quickly, and we'll do this. If you look at page 41 of the material, and I won't dwell on this too much today because we've done this before, but I just wanted to quickly show you something. There on page 41, it says logic circuits that perform particular functions are called gates, okay? And if you look on page 58, basically the same thing, we see that in about three quarters down the page, it says encyclopedia. Everything that a digital computer does is based on one operation, the ability to determine if a switch or a gate is open or closed. See, that's why you can do some things that some other people can't do. Because there's a gate open. Some people, the gate is closed. Other people, the gate is open. Some people have more RAM. Some people have more memory. As you start to get a little older, you start to find out that you need to go to the Wiz and get some more RAM. <laughs> because, you know, you're running out. But that's the way it goes, you know. You're running out of RAM. But that's what a gate is. A gate is, and, and then on page 62 of the material, <laughs> you see that it says in Stedman's Medical Dictionary that not only is there gates in a computer, but in Stedman's Medical Dictionary it says in a biological membrane, the opening and closing of a channel believed to be associated with changes in integral membrane proteins, a process in which electrical signals are selected by a gate. In your head, say, in your head, the gate. And taking all of this into consideration, you look at the Bible, and you look at page 919. And on page 919, it says in the Bible, 
in the book of Romans, in, in, in Romans chapter 1, in verse 20, it says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. So you understand how you operate because your brain operates like a computer. And now you understand that are gates. And do you remember last week? Last week when Dot brought in that Jewish book, Bereshus, by the two rabbis? And I, go, and I copied a page. And I put it on page 67. Remember? And look on page 67. And what did the rabbis say? In Bereshus. The rabbis said, there are 50 gates of understanding created and all were transmitted to Moses, save for one. Rosh Hashanah. And it says, what are these gates of understanding? It says, each order of the universe was created according to a plan, and to enter into the mysteries and to comprehend is to be admitted into the gates of understanding. And Moses had 49 gates. So it's not something that's a Christian thing or a biblical thing. It's a universal thing. Right? And that's what these gates are. And then when you look on page 68... The amazing thing is, you saw something out of Stedman's Medical Dictionary called medulla oblongata. Did you ever hear of it? Medulla oblongata is a lowermost portion of the vertebrae brain, continuous with the spinal cord. Do you know what the word oblongata means? Long gate. Long gate. That's what it means. And so all of these things, then, are there for you. Fifty gates of understanding. And the gates of understanding to know the complexities of the human mind. And the gates of understanding to, to be able to, to, to deal in logic, to, do, to deal in reason, not to deal in superstition like we've been dealing all of our lives. To be able to function and say, this is real. This thing in the sky that I'm seeing on the National Geographic, this is real. These discoveries by science, these planets weren't discovered by rabbis or priests or ministers. God, for these people don't know anything about this. They were discovered by scientists, astronomers, people, people who come out of the temples, people who come out of the churches, people come out from behind stained glass and look up into the sky as the, as the book says, look up for your redemption to us now. Pay attention. And you know the thing that's with me? Of all the things I've shared with you, people will say, well, you know, I, I'm getting to, I, nothing's happened for three weeks. I mean, you've been waiting 45 million years and nothing happened for three weeks. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I can take it. But it's, can, you, can, you, can you honestly, logically sit there and say that this is not ordained? And so when you have all of these gates and you understand the gates, that means you've taken a document, you understand it, and now you put it into practice, and as you do, you open it to page 473, and maybe you'll read this with me. You open it to page 473, which is the book of Psalms. And when you get to the book of Psalms, and you understand about Bill Gates, and the gates in your head, and the logic circuits, and the 49 gates in Moses, and the computer that you have running through your skull, and then when you open a Bible such as this for the first time, you'll be able to read it when it says in Psalm 24, verse 7, and read it with me, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Do you understand it? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And I'll tell you something else. When God said to Moses, build a temple according to a pattern. Build an outer holy room and an inner holy of holies and divide the two by a curtain or a veil. And then when it came time, what happens? We find out in the medical dictionary that your brain has an outer covering called dura mater, hard mother, an innermost holy place called pia mater, tender mother, and the two are separated by a rocknoid or the web the veil or the curtain. And I'll tell you, that web is truly the world wide web. And that web, when you understand and you're ready, that web will come down and Pia Mater will stand at the end of a hall with beautiful blue carpeting with her arms open to take you into herself. And as the scripture says, Jerusalem, which is above, which is your mind, is free and is the mother of us all. And everything 
is duplicated, everything is documented, and you do not have in your hands one thing from any new age or any church or any religious organization. Everything you've got in your hands is from scientific documentation of encyclopedias, manuals, and, 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 and so forth. This is the comparison that has been ignored by people who try to see God in books and behind stained glass windows. Close your books because you can't see God in a book. Get out from behind stained glass windows. Don't get up when everybody else gets up. Don't sit down when everybody else sits down. Don't repeat what everybody else repeats. Go out by yourself into the woods. Go out by yourself and look up at the stars. Go out by yourself and harmonize in this wonder that's happening. Listen to what the scientists are showing. Look at these magnificent discoveries that evolution has given us through Hubble to be able to see the creation. It's your turn now. Those were the people in 45, 55. They had their turn 6,000 years ago. Ago. Now it's your turn. It's your Aquarius. It's your turn to be part of this. And if, this is why in all of the things you do, you have to say, I, I now I understand God. God does not kill. God doesn't crucify anybody. God doesn't kill anybody. God doesn't want me even to have faith. It says right here, don't have faith anymore. The only time you have to have faith is when you're not sure. Experience it and know this is real. When you looked up at hell, Bob, you didn't have to say, I have faith that that's hell. I saw it. When you look on there and that picture, and you're waiting for the single eye, the pineal, the single eye of God to be the single eye in the same way, the single eye of you, the single eye of the sun, and you see it now with a color picture? What has he got to do? Sign it? <laughs> at the lower right-hand corner? <laughs> But if he did, it wouldn't be signed G-O-D, because you made that name up. No, it wouldn't be G-O-D at all. <laughs> I had people, I had a guy in a web, and he sent me, you know, you have to understand something. He said, you know, there's a beautiful little spider going right up the, no, right here. Yeah. Yeah. We, we see him all the time. <laughs> He's working his little thing off there. <laughs> Leave him be. It's just in, in space here. <laughs> but you know, I have I have uh, people call me up and say, I mean, I got to what is this? Jesus is Lord. There is no other name under heaven uh, by which you may be saved. And you have to understand that Jesus is the only way. So I sent him back. I said, okay. Then tell me this, if Jesus is the only way, then when someone prays, Jesus will come. Why is it when a Hindu prays, Krishna comes? Why is it when a Muslim prays, Allah or Muhammad? Why is it when a Buddhist prays, where? Because all of this is a product of your programming. Okay. If you are born into a Jesus culture, when you pray, Jesus comes. If you're born into a Hindu culture, Krishna comes. The Hindu doesn't sit and pray, oh God, make yourself real to me. I'm going to lose the house, the mortgage, the whole thing's going down. I opened the motel in the United States, the whole thing is collapsing. What am I? <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, God comes. And he doesn't say, look, Jesus couldn't make it, so he sent me. I'm Krishna. <laughs> You see what I'm saying to you? And so if we get away from that and Krishna doesn't come and God doesn't come and Jesus doesn't come, then we go to the stars and say, whoever you are, whatever you are, we are all together waiting. Come. I don't have to have my mind programmed as to who I should expect. And then we get to the temple and we understand the temple. The temple with Dura Mata, Pia Mata, Arachnoid. We understand that. But we find out something else about this. Dura, the outer, the veil, Arachnoid, Pia Mata, the inner, tender mother. An anatomically correct description of the human brain written in the Bible four or five thousand years ago by the one who had the 49 gates. Huh? And then we look, and we look at the construction of this. And we look at page 296. And if you look at page 296 in 1 Kings chapter 6, and it says, 
And the house, that's the temple not made with hands. That's your consciousness. Verse 7, that's what I say. Right? And the house, and the house when it was in building, was built of stone made ready before it was brought there, so that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was built. It was built in silence. Shh. See? It was built in silence. There wasn't a sound. Because when you come into the meditation and the lights are down and you sit in the still and the stillness fills and the house is built in silence. The mind is built in silence. The conscious it becomes no longer a house of chaos, it becomes a temple of God. When it's built in silence, be still. It's like it's built in silence. And then it talks about the right side, the right hemisphere, the place that Dr. Toller said is 90% invisible in us and 90% invisible in the universe. And it says in verse 8, the door for the middle chamber was in the right side of the house. And they went up with winding stairs into the middle chamber and out of the middle into the third. Read that again. They went up with winding stairs. Didn't, doesn't it say that? The human body. Could that, would you turn the lights down? They went up with winding stairs. Now let me show you something. Can you all see that? Say yes. <laughs> all right. Let me show you the winding stairs. That's DNA. That's the genes in DNA. Genes carry the information that helps determine an organism's characteristics carried in the form of DNA a very long molecule twisted into a spiral called the double E. And there's the winding stairs that go up to the temple of God. Why would they be winding stairs? Why not just they went up the stairs? Why winding stairs? Okay. This has to be a reason why it says winding stairs. And there it is. DNA. Okay. And I like something. Could you turn that And then it says, look at what it says. They went up with winding stairs into the middle chamber. That's the right hemisphere. And out of the middle into the third. Third what? The third what? This is the temple. This is the mind. This is the consciousness. This is the brain. And if you look at page 949, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, I know a man, Christ, above 14 years, whether in the body I cannot tell or out of the body I cannot tell. One was caught up to the third heaven. Had an out-of-body experience, didn't he? Well, how do we know he had an out-of-body experience? He says, I can't tell because later on he says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So he had an out-of-body experience, and he was caught up to the third heaven. <coughs> in Greek, there are five stages of consciousness. The first is earth, the second is water, the third is air, the fourth is fire, and the fifth is the new mind. That's baptism. But it's baptism that we don't understand. Because we still go in water, we go in physical water. But that's not what it meant. It means that you take your mind, you raise it to the second stage of consciousness and meditation, you will then be taken up into the third, you'll come out of the water and go up into the air, and that's the third stage of consciousness. Well, well, wait a minute, Bill, you can't just go around and come on after 2,000 years of Christianity and all of this and start changing the rules and say that you shouldn't get baptized in water. I didn't. The Bible did. But you can't even break tradition. And, and, and how do I know that? Well, let me show you. I don't know what page it's on. Sarah, if somebody's got one of these, tell me what page Hebrews chapter 6 is on. The Bible. Hebrews chapter 6. Page 979. And what does it say? On page 979 in the Bible. How do I know? The Bible told me so. Ah, George, I love it. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works in the faith towards God. 
of the doctrines of baptisms and laying on hands and resurrection. You shouldn't be doing it anymore. Why? Because he knew nothing can happen to you if you go in water. But if you take your mind and raise it to a second consciousness, which is water, and then raise it to a third consciousness, everything happens to you. And so there's the third heaven is air. And it says in the Bible, we will all rise and meet the Lord in the air, which is the third stage of God. This is true, but do you know how hard it is? Because, you know, people say, I love God, I love the Lord. But you know what you find out in reality? No, I love the church. I love the pastor. I won't do anything, no matter what God says. Who is this guy to tell me what to do? I love the church. And it's very hard to break those traditions, especially when you're friends and everybody else does. Even if the Bible says, don't do it. Even if God says, don't do it. Because everything is real. It's logical. And the baptism that you have to have takes you up into that second stage, which is water, and then up into the third stage, which is air. In other words, it's a renewal of your mind. It's not wetting anything. The third heaven, which is the place of air. The third what? Look. Do you ever hear of the thalamus? It's called the largest subdivision that consists chiefly of an ovoid mass of nuclei in leech lateral wall of the third ventricle. It is the king's chamber. The DNA, the winding stairs, goes up into the right hemisphere, then into the third ventricle of the brain. Did we hear the hypothalamus? The hypothalamus forms the floor of the third ventricle. The thalamus in the pyramid is the king's chamber. The hypothalamus in the pyramid is the queen's chamber. And the thalamus in the pyramid shafts light to Orion, and the hypothalamus in the pyramid shafts light to Sirius. Two well-defined fluid-filled spaces called ventricles are found in two hemispheres, these lateral ventricles connect with the third ventricle, located between the hemispheres by a small opening called... What is the name of the God in the center of your brain? What do you say at the end of every prayer? Amen. The two ventricles are connected by a small opening called... For amen. That's the third. That's where amen dwells. That's where amen moves through the circuits of the brain, through the mind. And so you build it in silence. And it goes up with winding stairs of DNA up to the middle chamber, which is the right, out into the third ventricle where it meets four amen. Go to page 10 of the stuff that I gave you. We're almost done. I know I'm running a little, a little late, but we're only about two minutes away. So we're not there. Go to page 10. And on page 10, you see, you see this? That's the cerebrum. Known affectionately to you on your greeting cards as cherubim. And the wing touched the one wall, and the wing touched the other wall, and the wings met in the center. That's the Bibles. Well, look what it says. <clears throat> if you look at the top paragraph, it says the third ventricle is the cavity of the inner brain, the inner house, where Pia Mater lives. Then it goes on to say it is an arrow, blah, blah, blah. Go down to the last sentence above the brain. Its sides are formed by the optic thalami and are limited by a delicate band of white fibers, the stria pinealis, the straight line to the pineal gland of the brain, which runs along the junction of the mischial upper surfaces of the optic thalamus to join the pillars of the fornix. Oh! The pillars of the fornix. We were talking to George a little while ago, and George was telling us about his raising in the, in the Jewish religion. This is so interesting, and I think you'll love this, and, and we'll conclude with this. The fornix 
I want you to show George this. If you look at page 32 of the material, okay? And you'll see on page 32 at the very bottom, it says delta wave. Okay? Delta wave. Now, if you go to page 33, you'll see the word delta, and then it says delta fornicus. In your head, this is the shape. Delta fornicus. Delta fornix. Okay? Now, if you will turn to page 37, I'll go to page 38. Page 38, you'll see a star map. In the center of the star map, you'll see a constellation called Fornax. And the bright star you see at the bottom of the page in Fornax is Delta Fornax. I don't know what God could have done to make this more clear. Now, George, if Delta Fornix is in the brain and our prayers go up and Delta Fornax is in the sky and the energy comes down, then the energy Delta coming down meets with the energy Delta coming up now known as the universal star of all life. The integrating of that which goes up from the fornix meeting that which comes down from the fornix in the constellation of life. So it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it's a beautiful understanding of the temple that is within us, the temple not made with human hands, and as it says, the door went up into the middle chamber, out of the middle chamber, and into the third, and into the third ventricle, where all of these wonders are for us. And so we've seen all of this. We've been a part of it. We have experienced it. We've watched again today. We've seen the winding stairs. We understand the right chamber. We understand all of this wonder. And, and it's hard. But isn't it, you know, sometimes you, you might have friends. You might have, and, and it's hard for you to even discuss it. But isn't it worth it? Is it right to subject the children of the earth to another 2,000 years of drugs and violence and killing and bombing and maiming and raping and pillaging, which is the legacy of the human race? Is it right? No. And now, when finally we have reached a point, you say, well, why is it happening now and it didn't happen? Why does the child in kindergarten not study trigonometry? Because the child has not evolved to a point. Trigonometry is there waiting when they have evolved to a point where they can understand it. You were not ready. The human race was not ready, but now you are. You couldn't talk 200 years ago about Hubble or about cosmic things or about computer things. They didn't know. But you do now. You evolved to that point. And now this stuff is coming all over them. Can you, don't you understand why every time you turn on the television, you see something about they're discovering something or something's going on in the sky or something's happening somewhere that has to do with UFOs? Or, do you know something? Do you know that last week, and I'm not going to get involved with that, but do you know that last week they found in Lawrenceville, New Jersey, on a farm, a crop circle? And the farmer said, oh, it must have been kids, must have been some prankster. But I wonder if it wasn't. Because I didn't see it was a design. I didn't see what the design was. Where will the next one be? On the parking lot? Why not? And what are you going to do after I've told you all of this? Stuff? And then when somehow walks through the door and asks you, you going to be here? <laughs> or are you going to say, uh, you know what? I, 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 I don't know. Charles, what's the name with that? It shouldn't be that way. There's no reason for it. You know what it says in the Bible? The invisible things are made known by the things that are seen, so they have no excuse. It's up to you guys. You can go into church and you can get behind the stained glass windows and you can sing the songs from the 1400s and have people walking around throwing smoke and all that stuff, and that's fine. If that's as far as you want to go. But if you want to understand, 
if you want your children to be healed, if you want the earth to be healed, if you want all of nature to flower, if you want the dolphins to leap and jump again and the whales to sing again and all of heaven to sing out, then it's time for you to look up for your redemption draweth nine. If you don't know what the word redemption means, go down to Atlantic City, go into the Harris or the Sands, hit the slots, and take the coins over to the redemption booth. You'll swap them in for something much more valuable. That's what it's, and that's what's ready for you now. And I don't know what else I can do but give you everything I've opened my mouth in documentation, scientific documentation, and then give you a picture of God's eye in the sky in living color. What else do you want? See? So now is the time to get in into the dark places and lift yourself up and find the truth within yourself and realize that if Moses had 49 gates, you can have 49 gates too. Just open them up. Open them up and part the Red Sea of emotion and cross over to the promised land where Pia Mater waits to take you in your arms. And you'll say, it's you. Now I remember. I remember who I am. I remember who you are. And then God will say, okay, let's get to work, clean up the earth, and make it the way I had intended it. The time is now. Okay? Yes? Just do the uh, symbol because you have any people around Coptic? Real quick, the Coptics of Egypt gave us the symbol that they encountered from Jesus in Egypt. And this is what they said to keep, and this was the basis of the this was the basis of the discoveries of the planets. Do you realize that? That I showed you this Coptic key long before they discovered the first planet. But when they discovered the first planet, we knew doggone well there was going to be eight and then a star. And it was just like this. And this is the key. That's the symbol with the eight. And then the scientists discovered eight planets, and then there was quiet for 18 months, and then they discovered the ninth, and then came the single eye. And that's the Coptic key, which is on here. And this is the story, that when Samahel appears, and Sa Samahel is, can be a very cantankerous person and a pain in the neck and overplays his job. You know, you ever been in a place where somebody takes their job too seriously? That's Samuel. I know, I know you don't hear any, he can, he's, but his job is very important. He's the obstructor. He doesn't allow people on the pathway to life who don't belong there or don't know what they're doing. In this, in this life, you call him Satan and, and all of that stuff because we don't understand. But that's what Samuel's job is. Samuel is electricity. See it? El, electric, El, Elohim, Angel, Igal, Gabriel. That's what he does. He's the guy that's going to show up. You're going to meet him. That's, one, that's the most exciting thing to me, is when you meet him, you're going to say inside of yourself real quickly, that's what he said, this is the guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the guy. And Samuel's going to say, what are you doing here? What do you want? And it's the way he acts. And you'll say, uh, I, I, want to walk, I want to go up the path. You say, what do you know? And you say, I know the symbol. What is it? It's a cross with an X and eight circles on the eight line. What else do you know? I know Azosio. Say the word just one time. Azo means light. Zeo is a root of the word zeolite, which means light filtered by crystal. I know that. And he'll say, do you know anything else? And you say, I know 45, 55. You know what it is? It's a galaxy in coma. And when you say that, Samuel will step to the left, reluctantly. And then you walk. And you'll meet those people. And many of them you'll recognize. And people whom, you know, we call them aliens in this stupid culture we live in, just people who live a little further away. They don't live in this neighborhood. People who have gone through the Aquarian experience thousands of years ago, and so therefore they've elevated them. So you see what's going to happen is after the Aquarian time, we start to fall back to this competitive times that we've come through. But we're down here. So we've gone through all this crap and we've been bombing one another because we weren't evolved. Now we've raised up to here. 
so that when we fall back, we won't be down here, we'll be about here, and we will be able to handle all of these problems a lot stronger, because we won't be working with 10% anymore. Tithing won't be 10%. We'll be working with 15, 18, 20%. And so we'll be able to deal with these things. And then when it comes around again, the human race will evolve up to about here. And then when the fall off comes back, we'll drop down to about here, so we'll have evolved. And finally, that bad side won't be able to overcome. I don't know if you understand all this, but that's the way this works. And as he said, have a nice day. Stay out of the heat. And goodbye, Mrs. Calabash. Wherever you are.